Hi, I'm back at the airport and I'm ready to fly. I'm in Cairo and I'm about to fly to Abu Dhabi with Etihad Airways. Now, most of the Etihad flights into Cairo are on the A320. Um, however, this one is on a brand new 787-10. So I'm in for a treat. I've just seen the aircraft come in and it looks stunning. So uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm also looking forward to seeing how the Etihad 787-10 uh, business class compares to their business class on the A380, which I flew recently. So uh, join me and we'll do it together. Uh, let's first just head to the lounge. I need a coffee and uh, a bit of a break and then we'll, uh, we'll board and we'll fly to Abu Dhabi. Let's go. Etihad uses the Pearl Lounge at Cairo Airport. It's quite a nice lounge, functional and offering plenty of food options. Before boarding though, I went and did some plane spotting, as you get to see airlines here that you just don't see in Australia. moment of cloud juice, but uh, cheers, he's took a great flight. It's a good drop. Because I was on an Egypt Air code share ticket, it was impossible to do any pre-departure seat allocation. As such, I was destined to get a middle seat rather than my preferred window seat. This takeoff footage was therefore filmed from a distance. That said, in a dusty desert city like Cairo, it is almost impossible to get good takeoff footage because the aircraft windows are always dirty with sand. On the 787, Etihad uses the same business class product as on its flagship A380. The cabin was therefore laid out in a 1 2 1 configuration so that every seat has direct aisle access. The only difference between these seats and the A380 is that this aircraft was only six weeks old when I flew it, so everything was brand new. I really like this design of business class cabin. The use of space is very clever. The seats are both staggered and face away from each other. This maximizes space and privacy. It also means about half the business class passengers are traveling backwards. Whilst flying backwards may seem weird, the reality is that you only notice a difference when taking off and landing. And even then, it's not a big difference. The backward facing seats are those with the easiest access to the aisle, whilst the forward facing seats are those closest to the windows and the seats in the middle, which are the best ones for couples. On this flight, I was seated in 7G, one of the backward facing aisle seats. Let's have a closer look at this shiny new seat. Again, Etihad have gone for a smooth flat design rather than the bucket seat. This allows you to move around more in the seat, which I prefer. A central control panel allows you to adjust the various aspects of the seats, including the recline, the position of the seat itself, and cushion firmness. Using this panel, it's not difficult to find a comfortable seat position. There is also a second panel with easy one-touch buttons for the main functions. One significant improvement Etihad has made in these seats is the addition of an adjustable armrest, which means you now have an armrest on both sides rather than just one. These seats remain one of the best in terms of storage and personal space. One main storage compartment next to you contains smaller areas for your phone and things like amenities kits. There is a spot for your water bottle that allows easy access during the night and space for your shoes under the ottoman. Electronically, these seats also have all the bells and whistles. You have several different individual lights which can be brightened and dimmed to suit your mood using the central control panel. There are USB ports on offer for charging your devices and right at the base of the seat there is a universal power point. The tray table is strong and sturdy. This combined with the large space next to you make these seats ideal if you want to get some work done. Privacy wise these seats also deliver. Whilst the window seats are obviously the most private, the high seat walls and an additional privacy screen means that even the aisle passengers have a great degree of privacy. My only slight criticism is that the privacy screen does reduce the size of the armrest.
Once up in the air, it was time for a drink from the bar. I went with a special small batch Scottish gin, the crew member thoughtfully asking if I'd like it normal or strong. An extra strong gin and tonic soon arrived, accompanied with roasted nuts. Etihad features live TV via entertainment system, so whilst enjoying my drink, I caught up with the latest news from the BBC. Here's a quick look at the menus. Normally Etihad offers dining on demand, however we had a strong tailwind so this flight was only two and a half hours. Lunch was therefore served about 45 minutes after departure. I started my meal with Arabic messi. You really can't go wrong with Messe in this part of the world. One of the things I really love about Etihad is their meal presentation. Every element and every detail, right down to the salt and pepper, the butter and even the bread basket and plate are beautifully presented. The Messe, as expected, was delicious. For mains, I went with the pumpkin ravioli. This was without a doubt the best pasta I've ever had in the sky and is right up there with some of the best pasta I've ever had. It was incredible. To finish off, I indulged in this beautiful passion fruit and orange sensation. It was good. Let's have a closer look at the entertainment system. The screens on these new 787s are very clear and bright, giving you an excellent picture. I really like the Etihad entertainment system. The route map in particular is excellent, with the ability to adjust almost every aspect of the route map. The rest of the system was also very easy to use, with lots of choices in both video and movies available. The audio selection was a bit basic, but most people have music on their phones these days. The live TV options were excellent, and this aircraft was also Wi-Fi enabled, however I didn't use it. Etihad provides noise cancelling headphones in business class, but the previous ones I used on the A380 were really poor, so on this one I just automatically got out my own. No amenities kits were provided on this short flight, which makes sense really. I did put the seat into the bed mode though to see how it compares to the A380. In terms of aircraft beds, this was a good one, with no unnecessary lumps interfering with your comfort. The leg space seemed to be better than the aisle seat on the A380. There was also plenty of space in the shoulder area. In terms of length, I'm 181cm tall and had a few centimetres to spare. By now the sun was setting, but because of my middle seat I couldn't film it properly. Surprising and sadly, this aircraft had no external cameras. Overall, this was an excellent flight with the 787-10 offering a really nice passenger experience. As expected, the Etihad crew were top notch, the food faultless and the well designed seats providing everything you need for a good flight. I'd certainly have no hesitation flying the Etihad 787 again. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. And um, if you haven't done so, please do check out my channel where you'll find a whole lot of other reviews and a whole lot more on the way. In the meantime, as always, happy travels.